Hi, I didn't realize that we were right here on the screen on the save. I guess I haven't really... Well, yeah, I haven't done anything with the Switch since we played the other day, so... Hi, welcome back. I'm here. I have low energy and milk tea. Milk tea, still good. <clears throat> um, when we left off, where is my audio? Oh, right. Oh, this is going to be difficult now. All right, one moment. I forgot to switch my sound settings over to over to headphones, so I got to I got to do some things. There we go. That should be better. How's everyone doing today? How's how's Thursday treating you? And for that matter, Wednesday. Uh, when we left off here, we uh, we were in Unionville, the delightful town where humans and monsters live together in harmony until the monsters are prepared are, are prepared as a gourmet dish. which is apparently really delicious. But that's not the point now, is it? So, uh... So the mayor of Unionville is, uh, is eating all the monsters and doesn't realize that it's wrong. And then was like, hey, so anyway, Mar looks really delicious. You should leave him here. And we were like, no. And he was like, okay. And then he stabbed, and then he tried to stab us. And Mar took the hit, and it's poison, so we gotta go find a poison thing. And I guess to do that, we have to go talk to some muscle dudes in Shoreland. So that's what we're gonna do now. And you're all caught up. Find the nutritionist. I think I know where they are. Probably at the nutrition clinic. The sign on the door reads, The Great Nutritionist Oreo. I mean, I know the spelling's different. But I'm deeply, deeply amused by Nutritionist Oreo. That would be a nice timeline to live on. You open the door without knocking. Is anyone home, you call? Nice, Ash. Nice. A muscular man emerges from the back. That dude is jacked! How do you greet him? That dude is jacked! Praising his musculature seems to put him in high spirits. Dude, do you know how jacked you are? Anyone can achieve a body like this with the proper diet, he explains. So why don't we enjoy a life of love and nutritional meals together? Well, you had me at love. Um... Gonna need some convincing on the nutritionist and uh, on the nutritional meals. Have mercy, you think? Then immediately change the subject. You politely ask if he is the Wait, nutritionist. Was that a proposition? Was he propositioning me? Is this <sighs> Is this the stereotypical big jacked gay muscle daddy? 
that Japan loves to pull out. Indeed, I am the nutritionist Oreo, he answers. He says he has been studying dietetics here for many years. You could at least have called him like Oreo. But no, nutritionist Oreo. You hand Oreo the extract and explain that your comrade is now bedridden because of it. He stares at the extract for a long time, and then... I love that we're still calling it what you call it extract. Opens the bottle and laps at the liquid inside. We told you it was poison, right? That's poison, Melanie shouts in alarm. Well, if we didn't tell him before. The man insists that he'll be fine with his expertise of nutrition and insists that knowledge is power, as if that will help somehow. I'm suddenly very curious how this man feels about vaccines. Regardless, it seems he managed to grasp the composition of the poison with that lick and starts concocting a nutritional supplement to counter it. I just realized he's wearing a fox skin as a scarf. However, he says he needs a spry fish, which has been difficult to catch lately. Sure. He needs a special fish to make the necessary supplement. You literally just said that. Like, those, those are the same line. The first one just has more detail. Let's try a different supplement. Fishing sounds hard. What else you got? All right, how do you check? How do you he explains that you can catch one in the surrounding sea. Riddus confidently interjects. No, Riddus, sweetie. It's true. Oreo might actually be the joke. She shows you a page from her ancient tome, which explains the ecology of the fish in detail. Okay. That could be useful. That book comes in handy from time to time. Melanie remarks in surprise. Is it the same one that tells her, like, her horoscope and the song that she needs to play to be rich? Oreo gasps as if remembering something. He says that his son went out fishing and, with a bit of luck, may have already caught a spry fish. Okay. It sounds like his son is fishing on the wharf. You decide to go find him. Sure. That is true. Oh, really? Why? Cool. All right, we'll get to that. That's true. Cuz the book did say if you play the uh, if you play the song wrong, that it would summon flame monsters. Which it did, and then she burned her own house down. Wow. It just dawned on me the gravity of she played the flute wrong and burned her house down. That's some next level incompetence. Anyway. So the book said that that would happen if you played it wrong. So presumably it would also, uh, it, also if you played it right, Maybe it would also be right. It's just that she didn't do that. Also, I was about to leave town, but apparently we just have to go over here. You see a young man with his line in the water and call out to him. He turns around and flexes, shouting out suddenly, power is power. <laughs> All right. We've found white Terry Crews. You stare, enchanted by his bulging musculature. Yep. There is no doubt in your mind that this is Oreo's son. The musculature is definitely what's bulging here. 
that's the only thing that I can see that's bulging. He asks if you have business with him. That depends on how much time you have. <laughs> Yo, this dude's jacked! Praising his musculature seems to have put him in high spirits. Fantastic! Yes! Bark at the jacked man! Kit seems to realize she's been manipulated into becoming content. Look, you're more content now. Ah, yeah, content! Doggo content! Get mad about it! Alright, bored of it now. Okay, you never get to be on camera anymore. Cause you don't get to you don't get to lay behind me on the couch. Okay, well that's happening over here now. Anyone can achieve a body like this with the proper exercise, he explains. So why don't we cast our needless garments aside and train together? Yeah, naked squats! Let's go! Have mercy, you think? Then immediately change the subject. Leg day, balls Though out! you are pretty sure of the answer, you ask the young man if he is the nutritionist's son. That I am, he answers. He introduces himself as Bruno and says he is learning to be a nutritionist like his father. I will remember that. You introduce yourself, expressing to him that you are a hero on a journey and require a spry fish to save your ill comrade. I just want to know if there was, like, a specific reason why you turned around and just said power is power unprompted. Like, was there something that happened or is that just like a, is that just like a daily affirmation that you do once in a while? It's fine either way. You do you. I just, I just want to know how often we can expect to hear that. His eyes begin to sparkle the moment you utter the word hero, and he becomes engrossed in your tale. Oh, he's joining the party. More or less grasping the situation, he regrets to inform you that he has not caught any spry fish yet. Oh, he's 100% joining the party. He says that a monster has settled near their town, and its thundering roars have scared most of the fish away. You know Oreo needs a spry fish to make that supplement. Mar! What do? Hearing the despair in your voice, Bruno speaks, his words like an ember in the dark. Are those his words, or is that like the weird fire ring he has between his fingers? Because I don't know what that's supposed to be. He tells you that there is a harbor near town where fishermen gather. That's honestly where I was going to go Perhaps first. Perhaps you can find the fish you seek there. You thank him for the information, then head to the harbor with your comrades. Just as you are about to leave, Bruno yeah. offers to escort you there. Yeah, he does. Is it a reward you're after? You are about to ask, but Melanie smacks you on the head before you can voice it and allows him to come along. Melanie wants him to come along. Yeah! Oh, let's go! Yeah, set up the party! Well, let's look at his actual... Let's look at what he's actually got first. 
Oh, he's a buff character. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I just got it. Oh man, this game's good. You, he's, he's, he's buff. He buffs, you've used the buffs, he's buff. Yeah, mm-hmm. All right, cool. Randomly decrease water damage by five. I guess if he lives in a, I guess if he lives in a port town, he's probably used to like swimming. Ah, uh, he's got garbage for weapons and armor, though. That's going to be a problem. Unless, does he just not wear them? Is he just like, is he just like Umaro? Where he just, he doesn't wear anything because it would make him too powerful? Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. Cast off our needless garments. Let me see if he actually can equip anything. That's what he's already got on. Oh, no, he can. He can. Oh, he's very slow. Yeah, I don't really want to take the hit of, uh, of two points to speed. But at this point, he's already going last, and also, uh, eight defense is not gonna cut it. I've got, like, an embarrassing amount of money at this point, so I suppose... Put this on Ash. Yeah, we kind of ground we we kind of ground everybody up quite a bit. Yeah, we got thirteen and we got thirteen and fourteens, and nine. So I'm with all of the uh, with all the exploration. We're Slightly over leveled. Upping his speed from three to five is going to help him not go last every time. But we'll see. We're going to try him out. If only because I want to see, I want to see like what his skills are like. And uh, 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 let's swap Melanie out for a bit. Melanie's really good, but we've been using her basically the entire game, so. I'm try just trying to I'm try different party configurations. Bruno looks ecstatic that he was allowed to join your party. I if I'm being honest, I think that probably like the end game best party is gonna just end up being Ash Mar and and Melanie. Although Riddus is making a case. When you ask him why, he tells you that his dream is to be an adventurer and has thus been training every day. I can't, I 
Couldn't tell. But his father, famed in the world of nutrition, forced him into following in his footsteps. Yeah, I feel like this could be really symbiotic, though. Like, if you adventure, you find new ingredients, you find new, you know, different cultures with different, like, nutritional... <sighs> traditions and like you go out and find stuff you bring it back and you do better nutrition stuff like you could you could do both one desires strength the other knowledge unable to see eye to eye the two fight nearly every day oh i understand now Oreo says knowledge is power, and Bruno says power is power. Fuck knowledge, get strong. I understand now. What will you ask, Bruno? <laughs> you got something against armor? Well, we gave him armor, so. How are you with the sword? You ask Bruno about his sword arm, saying you are something of a swordsman yourself. Bruno replies that he specializes in hand-to-hand -hand combat, then flexes his bulging biceps as proof. We got us a punch boy. We got us a punch boy. No weapons, big punch, doesn't care about knowledge or lore. Apparently, he only carries around a sword to look like an adventure. Yes! Oh, we get to ask both. Curious For once. about his attire, you ask why he does not wear armor. The answer is literally, literally, to flex on fools. Confessed that he once wished for armor, but deemed it unnecessary after gaining so much muscle. In that moment, you realize something. While his passion for being an adventurer is true, he is dumber than a sack of rocks. Yes! Biggest himbo energy! Let's go! words birds of a feather flock together run through your mind but you quickly chase them away afraid of what that means for you no you, you pursue that thought ash reflect on it let's go find a spry fish at this barren harbor with like eight people at it. It's barren. He has been fishing for several days, having decided not to return home empty handed. It's like, literally the thought process is like, Ash is like, God, he's an idiot. Everyone in this party is an idiot. Every, everyone, everyone in this part, every, everyone? He hopes his wife and child back in Shoreland are well. The woman says she has been waiting here for days, worried about her husband who has yet to return. You know, we played cards against her the other day, but we can't really see like beneath the thighs, but it kind of looks like she skips the hell out of leg day. Like, you have, like, rippling, bulging musculature 
all over the arms and shoulders and then just like just like completely rounded ass and like no muscle tone at all in the thighs that we can see. Even like the small of her back is like toned, but like it, it looks like the muscle, the muscle part of the design ends like right here. Which, fine, but it. Am I am I going too far with it? Is it? Should I stop? Am I digging a hole here? It just feels like an uneven design. Is all I'm saying. It feels like they they stopped halfway with the whole muscle woman thing. Like they they did it right in here and then just and then just otherwise just drew a pinup model. Oh shit, I forgot we got Ritus's story. Well, now we've got two to check out. Wait, I know that sound. The tones of a, of a most familiar flute pull this lively young lady away from her fruit gathering chores and toward our merry band of rogues. She carries a book she has read many, many times before and is never happier than when she has the time to let its pages carry her away on its soaring visions of the future. Oh, that's just, that's just pleasant. I like Rinus. She is also dumb, though. The only one in this party who's not dumb is, like, Mar and maybe Melanie. At the very least, Mar plays the straight man. Or, did I say Mar? Melanie does, anyway. Anyhow... I want to be cute and stylish, sure, but I really want to live happily ever after. Visions of a ring with a big old diamond on it dance in my dreams. Nobody gave me that ring, so you know what I did? Just look at these muscles. Aren't they cute and they shine brighter than any diamond? Hey, you know what? That's right, you get it, girl. Shine yourself. You deserve it. Lately, a monstrous roar has been disturbing the seas and scaring away all the fish. See, you can't really see him from, like, the middle of the thighs down either, but you can tell that his thigh has has musculature to it. You can see toning in his thighs. You can't in hers. It's just rounded. He sighs. Lamenting that his catches have been poor as a result. Why are you guys just randomly barking at things? Like, she's Punch Girl from the waist up and Ryza from the waist down. A rough tempered Piscator stands there, having just returned from fishing. Who the actual hell? is this humongous man baby. Tell her I legitimately thought it was a thigh tattoo. But now that you say it's the it's the card marking, I'm like, "Oh, damn, you're right. That's yeah." Mars fate rests upon this man's hall. These are the same questions, so we'll ask it this way. Terrible, he says, showing you the few fish he's caught. Inside, you see... A spry fish, Bruno shouts. All right. You ask him if you can have the spry fish, but he says he won't give it up for free. I mean, I got tons of money. Come on, you schmuck! 
How much? When you ask how much it will cost, he gives the absurd price of one million gold uh, pieces. This is why you don't act desperate to get things. You're heartless, Riddus pouts. The man is enraged by the rude response. Just then, Bruno prances forth and shouts, Stop right there! What is happening? Your fisherman muscles are simply sublime, he exclaims. All right, this is happening now. He challenges the man to a competition of muscles with the spry fish as the prize. Or so he says, but he will be very surprised and upset to find that we're just gonna throw lightning at him. The Piscator seems interested and agrees on one condition. If you lose, you must become my servant. It's a fish! This one's all yours, Melanie says, patting you on the shoulder. Then let the carnival of might and muscles begin, Bruno roars, completely fired up. Your puny body is no match for mine, the Piscator shouts back, throwing a punch. It... It looks like you took the head from the kid from Black Clover and put it on the body of Big Show the Wrestler. That's what we're fighting right now. Sure. Wait, it's one on one? Bruh! Oh, he's already not breaking through the defense. Just hit him. You're doing great. That's a little annoying, but okay. Okay, come on! Hit him big good. A battle of beefiness. You sound a little excited there, narrator. I don't blame you. What the heck? Like! Stop it, that's too much beef! We can't handle this much beef! But we can and we will. Oh, come on. Like, you could at least give him some XP for that so that he can catch up to everyone else's level. His victory sealed, Bruno strikes a glorious pose and shouts out. Yeah! You fucking know that pose is this. You know it is. Witness the power of power. That's fucking dumb. Defeated, the Piscator hands over the spry fish to Bruno. I love him. Bruno extends a hand to the Piscator, who has fallen to his knees. With a serene smile, he takes the offered hand. Does he now? An unspoken friendship begins to form between the two. Or at least, you hope that's what the prolonged silence between them means. I hope that's not what it means. 
I've heard about this, actually. I knew I recognized that face. As soon as he popped up, I was like, oh, I've seen this dude before. There's like a weird, like, subtle homophobia written, written into this. Where we're still, we're leaning into the old anime trope of like, ew, gay muscle dudes. But like, fuck that, I hope they rail each other. Good for you. Yeah, that was clearly a that was clearly a tutorial fight where you're meant to get to know his abilities. It's kind of weird that his his buff abilities are they're party wide, but then you learn to you learn to use them in a fight with only you. So I could I could definitely see someone who's not reading closely thinking that those are all just self buffs and thus or single single buffs and thus not as useful as they should be. With the spry fish in hand, you head back towards Oreo's clinic. So I, you know, I'm a little iffy about that as an introduction. I also, like, I guess the game doesn't necessarily know that I walked around the map and leveled up to, you know, 14. So they don't necessarily know that Bruno needs leveling up. But if you're going to give me a one-on-one, -on -one, at least, if nothing else, have him join a level lower than you think he should be and have him gain XP from the fight so he can level up. Like, that would be fine. Bruno looks at your group sadly. Reluctant for this little adventure to end. Who says it has to? You hand the fish to Oreo and ask him to make you the supplement. Give me a moment, he says, then takes the fish and heads into the back. One hour later. It's ready, he says, emerging from his room and handing you a bottle. Oreo's ha homemade supplement is nutritious and flushes out monster poison. You hope this will get Mar back on his feet. You need to get back to Unionville on the double. But before that... Can I just say for a second that given what we now know about Unionville... Um, I felt this the other day. I'm deeply concerned that we left our sick monster companion. Or not monster. I don't know. Apparently he's not because the poison shouldn't affect him. Regardless, we just left him there vulnerable. Like, pretty sure unguarded to come here. And, and do this. <laughs> How will you thank Bruno? Will you not thank him or will you not even greet him? I mean, yeah, we punched out the, we punched out the mayor, but like, that situation didn't resolve itself at all. So I assume he's just there. And who says he's the only one in the village who thinks eating monsters is delicious? I'm sure he's invited someone up to the cabin at some point. Let's just fucking bail. You wordlessly extend a hand to Bruno. Oh, that's actually classy. Bruno takes your hand and gives it a firm shake. You can feel the bones in your hands splintering. You just hope Bruno has enough self-restraint not to shatter them completely. Yeah, this might have been a mistake. Oh, God, I actually... 
off. You make a mental note never to shake hands with him again, then turn to leave. But Bruno stops you and says he wants to journey with you just a little longer. But Oreo is quick to douse the flames of his desire. You will stay here and study, he commands. Then you leave me no choice. Bruno's expression reads as he raises both hands behind his head and... He's... He's fucking gonna do squats. He's absolutely... He's, he's going into a squat position. This is squats. He's going to do squats. It was a joke before, but we're doing it now. Squats at hyper speed. I want to show this power to the world, Bruno proclaims to his father. You have much to learn, my son, Oreo retorts as he starts sidestepping at breakneck speed. I want you all to, I want you all to, to think about this scene. But think about what is, what the game is trying to convey here, which is a narrator telling you this story and moving the cards around on the table to simulate them doing this dumb anime bullshit. Only the sound of their labored breathing and bodies moving resonates through the otherwise silent room. You can only look on in stunned what? silence at the enigmatic display. Bruno falls to his knees, panting. This is my limit. Why are we still here? Mar is dying in the town over. And we've stood here with a cure for him, watching these idiots do squats for a half hour. Just like on the way out the door, be like, hey, we'll be in Unionville if you want to catch up later. We got to go. You have grown, my son, Oreo says, looking no worse for wear. So are you coming with us or not? Melanie interjects, ever the blunt one. Only our muscles know the answer, comes Bruno's cryptic reply. Is that a yes or a no, Bruno? I don't get it, Riddus remarks frankly. <laughs> Thank you, Riddus. Yeah, I believe it was actually yesterday that it was announced. I had no idea that was happening. I just have been interested in these games since they were announced and finally got a finally got a moment to play them. So, turned out to be good timing. Although I don't even know if I'm gonna roll into the second one after this one. On the condition that he study nutrition upon his return, Bruno is allowed to go with you for just a little while longer. You realize that these two have a very special way of talking that no one else can understand. <laughs> Cool. Oh, that's what it is. Hearing yet another roar in the distance, you realize you need to get the supplement to Mar so you can investigate the sound together. Okay. So it's essentially leaked yesterday. And then because of that, they were like, okay, let's just drop the announcement. And I think it's supposed to come out in like a month or two? Like before the end of this year, right? Like two weeks, yeah. That's what I thought. Any travelers with magical little critters can stay for free, the innkeeper informs you. Yeah, that's really fucking sinister now. It appears the headman's long-standing pronouncement on the welcoming of all magical creatures also applies to you and your party. Great! 
Can I see him? Is he in one piece? He appears to be in one piece. Mar lies listlessly upon the bed, looking somewhat haggard. You help Mar sit up. Drink this, Mar, you say to him gently. I'm going to go ahead and just guarantee to all of you that we're not going to be through this and the next game by the time it comes out. Also, 12 days is... 12 days puts us roughly one day before uh, Final Fantasy XIV starts. So, that ain't happening, but I'm sure we'll get to it eventually. He weakly opens his mouth, and you slowly pour the energy concentrate inside. Mar abruptly bolts up and turns his head toward you with a puzzled look. And then he's like, POWER! It looks like Mar is all better now. How do you express your joy? Bear. We will absolutely take damage from a hug. Let's just squeal. Mar! Mar! You cry over and over again? Sure. Mar mules back happily. Q. You join hands and cheer in happiness. Melanie and Riddus watch you too with a smile. Aww. Bruno is deeply moved to see nutrition bringing a smile to others. I mean, it's more of an anti-venom, but sure. With this, you can finally put the happenings of that strange village behind you. You decide to take Bruno back to Shoreland, then continue your search for the dragon. Wait, really? But... He was with us for like one second! saying you can like we're splitting hairs here but I feel like we're talking about nutrition here but like the work that was done is more akin to like an apothecary you arrive at Bruno's house though he seems to want to adventure a little more he reluctantly enters his house. You ask Oreo if he knows anything about the monster behind that mighty roar. Uh, we did not, and Mar is back in the party, but we did meet a huge muscle boy jacked dude who and maybe found him a fisherman boyfriend. He says that the creature nests atop a tower not far from town. I know where that is. With that, your next destination is decided. Here, you will part ways with these two, but you owe a great deal to the nutritionist and his son. Bruno looks at you. His eyes begging you to let him come along. What will you say? Fare you well till we meet again. I. Hmm. I want him to come along, but I kind of want to know if this is a forced choice. And if it's a forced choice, seeing how it loops us back around if we choose this is actually going to be really funny. But if I'm wrong and it's not a forced choice, then 
you know, we try to, we try to, like, make the choice for lulls and then lose a party member. So let's not risk it. Let us defeat the dragon together, you say to him. You are sure his power and knowledge will come in handy against the beast. Definitely the power. Not so, not so sure about the other stuff. And you realize with a grin, he will be so happy just to come along that he will not want a share of the reward. He is, we are such a piece of shit. Bruno is happy he can continue the journey, but Oreo stops him before he can get carried away. You must stay here and study, Oreo says. You said he could go on an adventure and we were gone for like three minutes. Bruno explains that the journey thus far has taught him the splendor of nutrition and he now wishes to travel the world to deepen his knowledge. This is what I was saying before. Traveling the world and studying nutrition are not necessarily mutually exclusive things, but also you were gone for five minutes. After hearing his son out, Oreo suddenly removes his glasses. Oh shit. Oh, it's real now. And in the blink of an eye, the flesh of Bruno's cheeks, pectorals, and abdomen recess. What? I... Huh? And Bruno is lifted off his feet with a dull roar. All right. Hear me out. What if we take Oreo with us? That seems like a smarter choice. Your eyes go wide at Oreo's assault, which was too fast for your eyes to catch. Knowledge of nutrition can help save lives, but also strike down enemies, Oreo says softly. Uh-huh. Wow, nutrition is incredible, Riddis marvels, not putting too much thought into the events before her or much of anything else, really. Knowledge is the true power. You tremble, never wanting to make an enemy of Oreo. Though Oreo still deems his son's knowledge insufficient, he tells him to travel the world and surpass him someday. Thank you, father, Bruno says from the ground, moved to tears by the strength of Oreo's knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Oh, this is good. So it comes to pass that you journey to the tower with Bruno to find the Roaring Beast. Excellent. Hmm. Yet another colorful character. Yeah, he's all right. 